Tune in to the Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today our guest is Dr. Nelson. She is she has started the Academy of Neuroscience, right? Cognitive and Behavioral Neuroscience, yes. Cognitive and Behavioral Neuroscience. So thank you, Dr. Nelson, for joining us. Tell us, how did you get started in the field? Well, and just neuroscience in general. I mean, it, it's a long story. How much time do we have? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I've always been fascinated by human behavior and the mind and why people do what they do. And um, so as an undergrad, I studied psychology really because I wanted to understand what I was going through myself. I had some, you know, trauma and just trying to figure out why I was feeling the way that I was feeling. So I took an intro psych class as an elective and literally my mind was blown. I was like, oh my God, this is, so I switched my major. This is what I want to do. And so I've always been curious and fascinated by the brain and started taking more courses and really fell into neuroscience because I liked being able to ask the how and why questions instead of just the, this is what we do. This is our behavior, um, which I'm, I love as well, but I really wanted to understand what's going on at the cellular level, at the organisms level, and even like an evolutionary approach to really understand how our brain is set up and why it does what it does. And then if we want to change, how can we grow, you know, and create new habits and understanding it from a more biological and chemical level um, to help induce new change and neuroplasticity, changing, rewiring our brain. Right. Um, so I was fascinated with that and went on and got my PhD from Johns Hopkins University and then got into academia um, as a professor, a full-time professor, which I still am, and uh, created the Academy of Cognitive and Behavioral Neuroscience to reach more people and to really hone in on, with entrepreneurs and helping professionals, mainly in the coaching and wellness space, to help them learn more about the brain in bite-sized pieces instead of having to enroll in college again, which obviously you can. You can still take classes with me at my college, but if you don't want to do the assignments and work with 18-year-olds, um, you can work more directly one-on-one -on -one with me. I do it individually as well as in a self-paced uh, online certification program to really help people stand out in their industry and earn a a certification in neuroscience uh, to really help them stand out and help their clients. Right. And so you, 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 you developed and created this, this program um, geared towards students, coaches, entrepreneurship. What was, um, what's the, what was the passion behind it? So um, when COVID hit and everybody was home, I stumbled upon this uh, a social media app known as Clubhouse. I don't know if anyone's yeah, familiar with that. Yeah. yeah. And so I was just in these rooms and talking with people. And when I would jump in the room and my bio would say neuroscientist, everyone just started asking me a bunch of questions. And I found that the people who were most curious were these helping professionals who, you know, teachers, not only students and, and just people who were curious about the brain, but counselors, therapists, um, you know, hypnotherapists and chiropractors and life coaches and mindset coaches. They just, they wanted to know the ins and outs of the brain so that they could help their clients better. And so they started asking me more questions. And I said, there's obviously a need for this. So that's when I created the Academy of Cognitive and Behavioral Neuroscience. And it started with just consultations, which I still do. Um, but then I really thought that it would be fantastic for people to work towards something. And so that's why I created that certification program that people can do on their own time. And I'm still available for one-on-one -on -one consultations. It's actually included as part of the, the certification. And um, I, I noticed that there was a need and just hearing people and listening to them. And because I was home <laughs> during the pandemic and, you know, didn't have enough on my plate with my two kids also at home, I just decided to actually create it and put my entrepreneurial hat on myself right. so I can understand the struggles of being an entrepreneur and a mother and wearing all those other hats and really just pick the juicy bits and pieces that people were really asking about to help their clients achieve better outcomes. Right. And so when people sign up for your the certification program, what are some things you want them to walk away with? So really, I think the, the biggest thing that my students are saying when they graduate is they didn't realize that it could be so digestible. You hear the word neuroscience and we're 
notorious for having all these really hard to, you know, understand and even hard to pronounce words and things like that. And mm -hmm. people can feel pretty intimidated and they don't think they can handle it, but that you can, right? It just takes the right instructor. And so by breaking it down into these bite-sized people pieces, my students come out with this confidence that mm -hmm. they actually have authority in this space and they can speak with confidence about the tools and techniques that they're currently using and be able to explain to their clients, well, this is why this works. This is how growth mindset works. This is what's actually happening in the brain. This is how we can change our habits and create new routines and overcome some of that self-doubt or whatever it is that you're working with your clients on, or if they have a psychological disorder or depression and anxiety or history of trauma or substance abuse, really understanding how that impacts the brain so that they can approach their clients in a different through a different lens. So they're really walking away with this authority in the field and they don't have to have a PhD or an MD at the end of their name, but they can hold a conversation with those people and actually understand what they're talking about and be able, and it's a lifelong skill because then I also teach them how to find reputable sources so that they can continue on their learning journey and be able to find actual data and understand how the research is conducted and how to understand it so that they can continue to use that information throughout their practice. Wow. And so people sign up the, um, the courses online. Can you yes. walk through that process? Sure. So they can just go to academyofneuro.com, which is the main website. And one of the first links talks about the certification program. And it really steps, it breaks it down. So there's eight modules that people go through once they sign up. And I do have a payment plan for people who, who need a little bit more time to, to invest in their education. Mm -hmm. um, and it really walks you through. So it starts with the basic fundamentals and then goes through development. And then we focus on specific conditions like trauma, what happens in the brain after trauma and how that can impact you throughout your life, uh, addiction and substance use disorder. And then we go into habits and motivation and learning. Uh, we talk about sex, gender, and sexuality. And then we even branch out into psychological disorders as well as various treatment options for people. Mm -hmm. um, and because I am not a clinician myself, I've used my you know, wealth of resources and other people and yeah. brought them in as experts as well to talk about different fields, like whether it's psychedelic use to help with, you know, different types of disorders or hypnotherapy or neuro-linguistic processing, all of these are programming, all of these different things that I am not an expert in, but to be able to introduce them to different fields so that they understand why it might benefit their clients or themselves. I have a lot of students who also just want to know what's going on with themselves as well right. and have that understanding, but it really does. Each module builds upon the previous one. And so you do have to pass a, 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 you know, a complete a quiz at the end of each module in order to advance on, because I want to make sure that everybody is on the same level right. before moving forward. Because um, I hate it when people spend money on these courses, and then they leave and they don't really know what they did. And they have this certification, and they really don't understand it. So once you actually earn the certification in cognitive and behavioral neuroscience, it actually means something. It's worth something. It's valuable. It shows that you have a certain level of understanding. And um, yeah, and and again, I'm available as part of the course. You get one-on-one -on -one consultations with me to ask any questions you want. There's a great community of other students. You can pick their brains and <laughs> it's fantastic. I'm really, really excited and proud of it. That's excellent. Now, I read in your bio that, you know, you are an international speaker, right? So what are some common misconceptions or challenges you face, you find people have about understanding the human brain and brain, the human brain, human mind and brain health? And how do you address them in your talks? Based has, you know, previously when I was conducting my own research and I was presenting in various conferences that way. And now in academia, as a professor, I do get invited to give various talks on specific topics. And a lot of people want to understand about stress. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't have to have a diagnosis to experience stress. Everybody <laughs> has stress in their lives, especially after the past couple of years and really understanding, you know, how it can manifest both physically throughout the body, but then also in the brain. And I think a big misconception is people think that, oh, you know, mind health 
helping your mind and mindfulness and those types of techniques are really, you know, it's kind of woo woo and it doesn't really do anything, but right. a lot of research is actually showing that by changing your mindset actually physically changes the structure and the connections within your brain. Wow. So if you have a broken bone, for example, you put it in, you go to a doctor, you put it in a cast, it heals and, you know, it regrows and, you know, connects and works better the same thing can happen with the mind and the brain. Maybe you have some, you know, physical trauma to your brain cells. Well, let's talk about how rehab works and things like that. Or maybe, you know, it's a, a mindset shift that you're trying to work on. And with visualization, people are always like, oh, not another meditation person and things <laughs> like that. I was one of those people too, until I started doing the research and understanding that by changing your mind and taking care of your mental wellness yes. actually takes care of that physical wellness as well in the actual organ itself. Right. The brain, liver, heart, lungs, right? You go to specialists for all of those different organs and the brain needs to be taken care of as well. So whether it's through supplementation or exercise or mental health techniques and meditation or affirmations, therapy, right. all of those things, not only does it help the behavior and the way that you think, but also it changes the physical structure and connections within the brain itself. And I think a lot of people are surprised to hear that. And, and it goes both ways, right? You fix your brain, you can fix your mindset, you fix your mindset, you can fix your brain. Right. Right. And that's the thing I was reading somewhere where they said like, you know, to work on, you know, just your overall health, you got to start with your brain and mm -hmm. then you just so then your body will fall in place. So you're, you're, you're absolutely, you're hitting on something. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so working with life coaches and well, wellness professionals, um, what qualities do you believe makes a true leader in these fields? I think curiosity is key, that individuals who love to have. I love it when a student asks me a question and they stump me that I don't have the answer at the, you know, at the tip of my tongue. And, you know, then I, it forces me to go look things up. I absolutely love when students stump me. So those types of people tend to do the best in this field because it does take a certain level of determination and grit to be able to get through right. and, you know, know that, okay, it's okay if I don't know how to pronounce this word, but I understand what it does. <laughs> and this is why it's important. And I'll let, you know, somebody else actually pronounce it for me, but I understand the function and the basis behind it. Right. And then ask more questions. Once you have that answer, what other questions arise? So I think curiosity is one of the key attributes for any, in any profession to be able to continue to grow and, and learn and help more people. And, and looking ahead, what goals and aspiration, um, do you want to see evolve in this field? I, I think, let's see. So for myself or for the field in general? For yourself and the field in general. So for myself, I'd love to, you know, have more students and be able to touch more people because it's that trickle down effect. If I work with the people who are helping others, then my impact is so much greater than just working one-on-one -on -one with people, which I do as well. But I feel that there's a much bigger impact on the world and mental health in general, if I can work with those helping professionals. The field as a whole, again, curiosity, continuing right. to ask these questions and with new technology and now AI being right. able to help and automate things, we can get so much more done and accomplished um, and then be able to continue to ask questions. What else can we do? What, what kinds of questions have we not even thought about asking to really right. optimize the performance of our brain and our mind? And what else can we as humans do? And looking at other species, for example, that how they handle certain tasks and obstacles and make decisions 
And then how can we learn and grow from them and be able to incorporate that in the field as a whole? There's so many new technologies that are coming out and that are being utilized in research. And it's an ever growing, rapidly growing field. And I know that the curriculum that I have now is going to be, it's going to be obsolete in a few years, right? So as part of the certification, actually, I have a lifetime access to the material. So any future updates, if a student says, you know what, I really wish that there was a module on this topic, well, then I'll create it. And my initial students will still have an opportunity to learn that without having to, you know, spend more money, any kind of new links or updates or new research publications, things like that. I continue to put that into the course itself, that once you're a student of mine, you're always a student of mine. Wow, that's excellent. Because I know even now, I'm going to school to get my master's. I'm a fashion designer. Oh, awesome. They have a course like AI design. And I'm like, wow. Like, you know what I mean? So now you're starting, like you're saying, you're starting to see the trends. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even say a trends, but you start seeing the future of how people are starting to adapt the AI to, you know, the field that they're in. And even in your field, like you're saying, just being able to ask a question to AI or even incorporate into the course is just like, Okay, now we, we're, we're, we're moving forward. <laughs> yeah, and be able to use it in an ethical way. I think that right. AI can become quite unethical. I mean, you with fashion design, I'm sure, you know, through different, uh, you know, algorithms, they might be stealing your designs and you might not even have any knowledge of that. And so I think it's really important that we understand the pros of using artificial intelligence, but also the downfalls and the pitfalls and how we can't always rely on it and to be educated consumers of the material understand okay does that sound right how can I fact check this how can I make sure that I'm giving credit where credit is needed things like that I think it's really really important to be able to do that as well right and Dr. Nelson so if people wanted to sign up for your course um, or get in contact with you can you provide that information Sure. Uh, So academyofneuro.com is the easiest way to find me. Um, And there's even a little chat bot at the bottom that people can reach out to me. I have um, other links on the site itself. There's some actually a really good special going on now for um, a course on stress in the brain, as well as a bundle with understanding more about different substances of abuse mm-hmm. and, you know, that could potentially save somebody's life. So that's a, a bundle that I have on that main website to learn more about the certification. There's a link on there as well. And um, I, for people who are interested in a webinar and any upcoming courses or live courses, there's a get more info button. So just click there and you'll be added to my email list. So you don't have to buy anything to stay in contact with me. And um, on social media, my handle is at be well with Dr. Haley. And that's Haley with two Y's. So H-A-Y-L-E-Y. And um, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn. I'm on all of them. And then I also jump on Clubhouse every once in a while as well. Not as much as I used to, but I'm still on there every once in a while. But thank you, Dr. Nelson, for taking time out of your busy day to come talk with us about your program, the certification that you're offering. And, um, you know, I commend you for all the work that you're doing in in the field of neurology, um, neuroscience, I'm sorry. And, you know, just continue to, we got to continue to help people change their mindset so that, you know, they can just be a better person and help other people because it starts with one person. Exactly. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks. Tune in to the Diva Hot Show. Motivate the club. We get your mouth and fall. Think to my head and tell. I let the whole world know. I let the whole world know.